Okay, good morning, everybody. My name is Inga Cotton. I'm the founder and executive director of San Antonio Charter Moms. And these are Charter Moms chats. And we're, we've been going live on weekdays around 9 a.m. To And the summer, we're talking about ways, inspiration to help to keep your kids uh, learning at home this summer, since a lot of stuff is still closed. And um, a lot of us are, are wanting to stay safe by staying at home. And today, we're going to learn about staying green at home. Oh, I have a visitor. <laughs> <laughs> she is my garden helper. She um, trims, she deadheads the roses for me, trims off all the dead flowers and roses. And uh, she and her brother water the plants. So we have an urban flower garden on our patio. So, um, but yeah, that, that's the gardening, half of the gardening team <laughs> at the Cotton Household. Um, so but our guest today is um, Greg Bell. Am I saying that right? Yes. It's Beal. Beal. Oh, no, I'm sorry. Beal. Greg Beal, um, sustainability and diversion coordinator at Texas Disposal Systems, um, which uh, even if you haven't heard of Texas Disposal Systems, you've probably heard of Gardenville. Um, I think people in San Antonio are more familiar with that maybe. Um, so uh, what Greg does, he um, he works with governmental and school district clients. Um, they do, he does trainings to talk about best practices um, so they can move, be more sustainable. Um, so you work with a lot of school districts in Central Texas. Uh, you work with the airport up in Austin. Um, and they, those places have zero waste initiatives. So we can talk about that. What does zero waste mean? Sure. Um, and um, yeah, so you have a passion for recycling and you share that with um, like, you know, students at schools and, and you're trying to, you know, promote the mission of Texas disposal systems. So thank you. And we have a guest post uh, on the blog today. I'm going to, I'm going to show that screen real quick. So this is our, our new post today about um, let me scroll down a little bit. So it's about staying green at home. So I hope y'all, there's a link in the description and I hope y'all will um, check out that post. So, all right, so going back to Greg. Okay, so um, so great. If there are people who have not heard of Texas Disposal Systems, but maybe they're familiar with Gardenville. So um, can you tell us more about, um, and this is like, there's more resources, how to's in the, in the post, but um, if families are wanting to start a garden at home, um, how can Gardenville help them with that? Excellent. Thank you. Uh, thanks for having me. I appreciate being here today and all the work you do in helping out families navigate these times. So it's pretty cool. Um, yeah, so Gardenville, uh, that's one of our companies, right? So what Texas Disposal does is for that operation, it'll collect brush and other materials like post-consumer and commercial food waste. And what they do is bring it to our facility in Creedmoor, which is about 10 minutes uh, south of Austin bring it there and process the materials so it turns into compost and fresh material to grow vegetables and garden and also landscaping with. A lot of materials too, we take the brush and make mulch, which is really great. If you know anything about gardening, we know that mulch is really great for retaining water in your garden and it actually gives it a nice look as well. So that's what we do. And at Gardenville, if you want to start, you know, go down. The people that are there are experts. They know everything and they will talk your ear off about starting a garden. So if you really want to go down there, you're going to get some experts that are going to help you. If you're just beginning or an, uh, an intermediate, they're going to help you out and let you know what you need to grow, what you want to grow in your garden for sure. Yeah. I'll but call them all the time too for, for, for advice. You know, I am new yeah. to text about a year and a half in, so climate's a little different and I'm learning my gardening skills as well. That's right. In Texas, you can in theory grow year round because we don't get as much frost, yeah. but in the summer, the heat is really a challenge, right? Yeah. Yes, I'm learning that the hard way. <laughs> yeah, and the, so in the blog post, um, specifically on the topic of um, you know gardening at home, uh, there's a link to a resource about uh, how to build raised beds. So right, that's so like you once you build the raised beds, then you can get things like compost and soil at Gardenville to fill the raised beds. You put the plants right. in, and then to keep the moisture and the water in the bed, that's where you spread the mulch on top, right? To, yeah. Correct, correct. So yeah, there's different types of mulch. One of the best mulches I think we have, it's called the living mulch. So it's mulch mixed in with compost. Uh -huh. So when you put that on the top, all the nutrients when it rains will go into the soil and just feed all the vegetables. And I'm not saying it just sustains itself, but it's a little bit easier than trying to do your own mix and all that. So right, right, right. Cool. Yeah. And then another thing that, um, so like, as you know, right, I mean, so the, the purpose of this series is giving families resources, inspiration, so they can like keep the learning going at home. So, um, so like while we're on the, like thinking about gardening and stuff, 
um, you know, it's great to like, you know, build the garden, put the compost in it, put the mulch in it. And like, you know, like your backyard playground, like your play set, it's safer if you have a layer of mulch as like padding under your play set. Um, yeah. But if you want to know how the mulch is made and how the compost is made, that's where y'all have YouTube videos that do like, like virtual tours of the factories. I was watching a clip of this, like, it's amazing. Like, it's a pile of like old wood, like from construction sites and stuff. And then it gets all, all chewed up. And so, yeah. It's, it's pretty neat. I mean, the machinery is massive. If I'm standing next to some of the machines, the tires will be about five feet above my head. So it's very industrial. And it's kind of interesting if you have compost before in your backyard versus this is called industrial composting. It's a lot different. So we can accept a lot more materials that you wouldn't be able to do in your backyard. Backyard, you can only use vegetables or eggshells, things like that. With us, we take in meat, bones, oh, wow. um, paper products. Yeah, because the the... It's, I'll get a little science on you. It's a thermophilic pile, so which means the heat is what's breaking it down. So we could put in so many different materials and it breaks down in about two to six weeks. That way we can put in the meat and other stuff that you wouldn't want to put in your backyard because of pests. Yeah. So. No, that, that's, 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 that's a party foul to do that. Yeah. No, yeah. I wouldn't want to do that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so, the smell. So they know the great mix yeah. to put in there and make sure that everything is healthy. It's all certified organic too because they take a good process. Everything gets screened out. You know, we try to, Make sure what we get is clean, but say a plastic bottle or something winds up in there. It does have like quarter inch screens, so that stuff won't go into the compost, which is great. It won't decompose anyway, so you know after <laughs> two weeks that that plastic bottle's still there, and we know why. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right, right. Yeah, I mean, I think I think so, like I know so many friends who've been, uh, you know, either setting up gardens or improving their gardens, and like they're making these like little like like victory garden Facebook groups, and they can offer offer tips and. Um, I have a, a friend, her daughter is, and her, her, her daughter and her boyfriend are building, um, like, uh, the garden beds, like they, and they make benches and beds. And then that way, like, you know, you can get your backyard set up and, um, yeah, I think it's, I mean, it's a great thing and you, know, and you learn so much about science, um, you know, sure. from like, you know, planting stuff with your kids and it gets them interested in eating healthy food too. Cause if they want to eat the stuff that they're growing, you know, they might try a vegetable that they might not otherwise have tried. <laughs> right, right, definitely. Uh, Multicolored carrots are really, can be a transition vegetable for some kids that might be wary of eating their veggies. So doing that, and just getting out there, getting getting their hands in the dirt. It's kind of fun. Just showing them the life cycle of a seed from a seed to seedling and all that. And then you can bring it inside, you know, you do something outside. I've done this with my daughter where We'll be outside gardening, but then, hey, let's go inside and actually do a lesson. You know, take some work on the parent part, but there's so many resources online just to find some some pictures or diagrams. I think a fun one is just to get a diagram, have it blank, and, you know, quiz them on what is this part? What does this do for the flower? What does this do? How do they pollinate? And then just go on a nature walk and talk about all the different flowers and everything, and you'll be amazed. The kids will really open up and start just talking to you. It's a great, you know, it's a hard time, but it's a great time too. I wouldn't have gotten to do these nature walks with my daughter, you know, once a week back when this all started. And it was really great seeing some new new flowers out there. I didn't know there was a, a red blue bonnet. So I guess it's a red bonnet. I didn't know those right. exist, but we found one. We those were are, really those <laughs> the, um, at, at Texas A&M, you know, their color is maroon. Um, they, they, they actually sell seed packets that have only maroon <laughs> blue bonnets in them. But they, we were, 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 they yeah. revert back to blue, but um, yeah. but they have simply <laughs> red packets of maroon only. So <laughs> those right. Aggies, they have quite a lot of ingenuity for selective breeding. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. So it's just interesting. Just starts a conversation and gets them interested in what's around them, right? Yeah, like, and so you mentioned wire. like like nature walks and like you know helping your kids see what's around them and actually nature walks came up in our talk yesterday we were talking yeah. with um a, a, a charter school founder who loves math and she was talking about the fibonacci sequence and how when we as you observe things in nature you can see these math patterns that repeat and um it's it's really an awakening when you like like if you pick a daisy and you count the number of petals it's probably a number on the fibonacci sequence and if you look at like a pine cone or a pineapple you know the way the segments um you know just just all these patterns and so you know you can kind of do double duty on a nature walk you can talk about the you know the life cycle of plant and then you can also talk about like the the math behind mm -hmm. um the shape of that flower and yes. uh, you know just be learning lots of oh we have we have a proud aggie <laughs> He says gigum. Okay. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> I'm not uh, involved in that. 
<laughs> we know that the Aggies turned up. So, but as we're talking about schools, so um, Texas Disposal Systems has a lot of school districts as clients. And so the, the school districts that y'all partner with, they have access to the Eco Academy curriculum. And right. uh, we've got links to that in the post. Actually, let me let me fly up the banner of how where people can find that's where we're gonna find the Ego Academy. But so um, and then the the first lesson, y'all have made it available free on the website because right. You know, try, everyone's trying to help out, right? Because you know the parents are home. We're trying to find stuff to keep our kids busy. So, so talk about Eco Academy. Like, what does it do for the the school partners? Um, you know, how is it related to the Teeks, and um, how can families use it at home? Sure. So, like you said, the first the first lesson. I think there's six so far. So the first lesson is available for free online. Uh, that's third, fourth, and fifth grade. And what we mean by TEKS, that's standards that Texas has set for each grade that makes sure they get the vocabulary and all the other information that would be necessary to fulfill those TEKS requirements. So the reason we have put that in is so for teachers, if they want to use this, they get it. It's a PDF right on the front page. They can plug and play and say, I'm already doing this lesson that's going to be in this section. I can fit this in. And it's all hands on because I'm sure you know, uh, being an education project-based learning is big these days and really is a way I think I learned as a student, you know, doing things visually and tactile, I think is very important and it makes things more lasting impression on your brain, uh, you know, because you're doing it, you're physically in there, you're not just looking at a board and hearing words. So it's really great. The first one is you're all trash makers, which is really great. So what you do is you, you build a mini landfill in a mason jar at home. And this kind of goes in with, with what I do about recycling and you can see how things decompose, right? And I don't wanna give away the ending if any kids are watching, but the plastic <laughs> bottle is not gonna decompose. Right? <laughs> Take a little bit of plastic and some food scraps and put it in you'll see, oh, and do observations about what's happening. And in the end, you'll see this stuff is lasting a long time. And that opens up the student's eyes to, you know, if I go to the store or if I want some water, should I just get it from the faucet with a glass or should I get a plastic bottle? When they find out that plastic bottle is going to be around for a thousand years, they might think twice. The same with the nature walks, hopefully even in a nice neighborhood, but sometimes people do litter. So yeah, I, I usually ask the kids how they feel if they do a nature walk. What do you think when you see trash? Do you like that when you go to the park and see garbage on the floor or anything like that? And of course, I'm about recycling, but also don't litter. That's that's yeah. bad too. I mean, yeah. high level is reuse. Don't use it, but also just throw it in the trash can. It's a shame to just see any any trash in nature. I yeah, we, we live near a floodplain and it drains a large area of suburban San Antonio. And unfortunately, okay. the the uh, the brush and things on the edges of the streams tend to catch a lot of the trash. There's a lot of like plastic garbage bags, and a lot of mm -hmm. like styrofoam soda cups. And, you know, mm -hmm. and, and so when we go for a walk on the Greenbelt by our house, we see after a big rainstorm, we see a lot of trash and it's a, sure. it's a bummer. And I think the city's working on creating like a, a system that would catch the trash so it doesn't Kind of build up but um but yeah that that area has been neglected a little bit so i mean we're grateful for the flood control but you know it'd be really and it, it just breaks my heart to see so much trash it's like what are what are people doing what right. you know and it, yeah i think we, like it's, it's doing that project and seeing the the plastic bottle that could reinforce like because you know I've, I've taught my kids like if you if it can go in the recycling it should go in the recycling you know and then they're yes. the ones who, who take it out to the green can they take the green okay. out out to the street on mondays and it's part of it's part of our routines and you know that but that project would help reinforce like why we're doing that why we're putting it in recycling instead of in the landfill i think that's one of the most important things is to do the why behind it because otherwise it's just the rigmarole of another job to do at the house you know another chore but when they do see the reason behind it i think it's, it's very important um, yeah. especially i mean we we're talking about composting earlier and i know you know what's the difference if i just throw this food in the landfill well it's twofold really one is the environmental impact, right? When we do put food scraps or food products in the landfill, what happens is since it's covered up, it's not getting sunlight or air, right? So this creates methane gas. We have to just let that release into the air, right? So there's little flare ups here and there where we release the methane into the mm -hmm. air. Another thing is landfills with, you know, Texas having, I think five of the fastest growing cities in the country, yeah. landfills don't last forever, right? It's a yeah, whole cool. gonna, it's gonna fill up. So now if it fills up, all of us, residents, commercial, we're going to have to pay to get this trash is going to go 50, 100 miles instead of where it was. So it's an economical, too. So if you talk to people on that end, it's like, whoa, hold on, wait a minute. That that stops the adults. The kids, you can talk about the environment. The adults will want to know about the economic. They want to know about the bottom line, right? They want to yeah. know about like, that fee on their water bill that's for the trash pickup. And it's like, 
Yeah, we're going to keep that as low as possible, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hopefully. Yeah. That's why we encourage it because, you know, study, especially from schools, I think about 80%, if you include composting, can be recoverable. You know, there's not much trash produced in school. If you think about it, you have paper where they do their projects, that's recyclable. If you go in the cafeteria, there's food scraps. Depends on what kind of plates they use. Some places are using reusable now, which is great. Uh, I know Austin uh, ISD went to all compostable trays, which was really great. Yeah. I think when they started the program, over the course of two years, they wound up diverting about a million pounds of compostable materials within that one year over the district. So that's a big carbon footprint to take away from what they've done. Yeah, so that's, that's, a really, that's a really good message for the SA Charter Moms audience because a lot of us are like, we are like those parents. We are, we're the ones who are always up at the PTA meetings. And always, you know, I mean, parents can... At, you know, talk to your school board, talk to your school leaders and say, how can we make our campus more green, right? Could we have compostable materials um, on campus? You know, it's something that, I mean, you know, hopefully the school leaders and the school board have that vision, but it's something that, you know, I, I'm big on parent advocacy, you know, that the, the parents are change makers um, to make things better. So um, parents, we are arming you with information. Greg Beal is helping us. Like we can, um, you know, advocate for, um, you know, making our schools more green. So yes, thanks. Yeah. The education piece is important too. You know, you can get all the products and everything, but everybody has to know how to use it. So that's where I come in with the schools. I mean, you have, there's so many wheels going. You have the students who could be high level doing the right thing. But when it comes to the custodians, if they're not put it in the, in the right container outside, it was all for not. So you have to make sure everybody's on the same page with what's going on where, because if you're not, it, you know, kids might become disenfranchised and just cynical if they see that happening. Even the teacher sometimes will say, the custodian comes down and puts it all in the same bin. It's like, well, it looks like we're going to have to have a talk. <laughs> yeah, I used to work at an office like that. Like we would we would be really careful to sort out like the office. There was a special bin for the clean office paper, you know, because that's a high dollar on the recycling market. Yeah. And then and we'd see it get jumbled up. And it's like, why did we go to all that trouble? Mm -hmm. Yeah, everybody <laughs> has to be on the same page. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. that's why we're starting with the kiddos these days. These habits they form, they're the next generation coming up. So they won't even think about it. It'll just be second nature for them. I've seen some kids that are high level and they'll go up and, you know, make it a little fancy, put a little mustard on it. And they're like throwing things in this bin and that bin, doing a spin and all that. It's like once they know what it's kind of just fun for them. They're just like it's in there. They just do it. So it's pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. Really that's, that's good. So an, another thing that's fun for kids is the uh, the coloring pages. Um, yes. Oh, and I should have I should have queued these up. They are they are just beautiful. So um, and they're available on the website. So let me let me bring up the banner where people can get the coloring pages. So can you tell us about the backstory? on the, these color pages and, and what they what they teach. Sure, I'm trying to get the artist's name because I want to give her credit because she- Oh, she, right, it's uh, uh, Becca Borelli. Yeah, yes, yeah. So it's a local Austin artist. And adult coloring has become popular in the last few years. Kids can use it too, but it's also for adults, you know, if you want to get your nice pencil set out or crayons and just color, it's supposed to relieve stress. Apparently it could bring your blood pressure down a little bit because you're just focusing on one thing, right? With everything going on in the world right now, if you're just focusing on that coloring, making it look pretty. I think that's good for a good 20, 30 minutes to just do that. Even for the kids too, you know, they hear the news in the background or might know what's going on. And just something to focus on and just take you away a little bit. And that looks nice and pretty at the end, right? <laughs> yeah. So one of the things when I, when I looked at the coloring pages, I saw one of them is based on um, another a company that's part of a TDS, which is the Exotic Game Ranch. So oh, yeah. about that, I was like, wait, what? Yeah. <laughs> there's a rhinoceros, there's a zebra. I was like, wait, yeah. what's going on here? So, so talk about Exotic Game Ranch and what that has to do with um, the sure. TDS mission. <laughs> Absolutely. So I get this question all the time because on our, our trash trucks, you'll see pictures of animals. And people are like, why, do, why are there animals on your trucks? It's because we do have an exotic wildlife game ranch. Um, it's there to protect some animals. There's some endangered species. I have my numbers here. There's 2,000 animals on the uh, game ranch and there's a hundred different species right now. Uh, it's just there to show how animals can live in harmony with a landfill that's next door, right? It's in our buffer zone between the composting facility and the landfill. So these animals get to live there peacefully. It's really nice. Uh, unfortunately, we don't offer public tours, but there is a virtual tour online if you wanna take a look. But there's so many different animals there and they just live in harmony with each other. And it's a good place for them to be instead of at a zoo or in the wild being hunted down, you know, they have a nice place to live out their life right there at the the game ranch. Uh, the owners are just big fans of that, right? They, they wanted to make sure that there was a place for these animals to go. 
That's why they have some endangered species back there. I saw, I see some tigers back there. There were some monkeys and rhinoceros and just every type of animal you could think of is there, which is really neat. And they're just, like I said, living in harmony. We even reused some of our old, um, what we call roll-offs, what you might call a dumpster, the larger one. We put them on the side when they're decommissioned and they'll use it for shelter. Oh. If it's a rainstorm or something coming, you'll see the animals will kind of go in there and use that as a shelter. So it's just keeping that cycle of life going and we're reusing what we do. We don't just throw out those things once they're done. It's like, hey, let's use this for another purpose. So always right. thinking of some other way to use it. Um, there are tours available. I know you guys probably couldn't do it, but we do it for nonprofits. If anybody eventually becomes a client, we, we can do a tour of both facilities of the recycling facility and that. But uh, do the virtual tour too. It's kind of fun to see that as well. Yeah, I mean, virtual tours are, that's great. Cause I, I mean, you know, we're, we're spending a lot of time at home, but you know, thanks to technology, you know, we can make our imaginations go a lot broader than just, you know, just what's inside. And um, you know, these may be things that, that I kind of take for granted, but I'm trying to like really, you know, you talked about like you had this opportunity to go on nature walks with your kids that maybe you didn't, um, you didn't have before. And that, um, you know, th so like, I mean, there's, there's so much stress out there and there's so many challenges out there, but we can find these silver linings. And so I'm finding time to like stop and explain things to my kids about how the world works and how we can make the world better. And um, you know, understanding how, you know, why recycling is important and how composting works, like how like our food trash can actually become, you know, fertilizer right. for more food, right? That that's, mm -hmm. that that's beneficial. Let's see. Oh, looks like we have a, a, a question about recycling. Oh, okay. Um, okay. She says, uh, Emery says, I have a recycling question. What do the numbers mean on the plastic packaging? <laughs> that's gotta be in my top 10 of what folks usually ask, right? And this is what I used to do. You know, if you see on the bottom packaging, there'll be what we call the chasing arrow. It's called the mm -hmm. recycling symbol where we see the arrows, the three arrows. So in most people's mind, they say, oh, that's recyclable. It's the recycling arrow. That's the same thing on my can and I throw it in. Unfortunately, that's not the case. Those numbers are uh, the plastic resin ID of that particular material, right? So one example is a plastic bag will have that ID on it, but there are no um, recycling companies or any waste haulers that will recycle that that's not be able to be processed in, in, in a capacity that's worthwhile for anybody. Because in the end, these are commodities, right? If we get plastic, we, we process it. That's another thing I want to mention. We don't recycle the material. We collect it, process it, and kind of sort it out into the different numbers, right? So the mm -hmm. one through fives, if we have a two, that's pretty uh, high density polyethylene. So that's good because we could crush that together and make a 2,500 pound block, which then somebody will buy and recycle into something else, right? But things like plastic bags, we can't really recycle them. They get caught up in the machinery. They're too lightweight. They'll fly all over the place. They have little to no value on the aftermarket. So I just recommend don't use the plastic bags when possible. Uh, try to bring your reusable one. But if you look on the bottom and it has that number, it doesn't mean it's recyclable. It's just telling you what plastic it's made out of. Which is pretty interesting if you want to get all science on it. But <laughs> well, yeah, because <laughs> they like. They have different melting points and yes. right, they're made out of different resins and right. um, some of them are clear and some of them are kind of cloudy and yeah, yeah. there's a lot of, it can get very sciencey with it, right? <laughs> yes. I mean, it's interesting, but for the sake of recycling, it, I, I wish they wouldn't put the same symbol in a recycle bin that's on the plastic because that does confuse <laughs> consumers through and through. But, uh, oh, I actually made up a, a rhyme that I give to the students that I work with and I'll give it to you. Give it to you for free there, Inga. <laughs> I say, if you smash it, you can trash it. So we take with a plastic bag. If I can smash this type of plastic, then I need to just throw it in the trash. Now that's only in school because you can't recycle it, but you can drop those off at you know HEB or Home Depot, all those places. Just take a look. Usually by the exits or the entrance, they'll have a recycling station. So note it next time you go and say, you know what? I can actually save these bags and put them in here next time. And they will put them to the right places to make sure they get recycled. It's just a different process, a little more labor intensive and you have to make sure everything's clean. But I would suggest that, you know, yeah. don't use it, but if you do bring it there. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's good to know. I mean, if you know where to put it safely, then, you know, that, well, that's a good segue to, we have another question. Oh. Um, Wendy's asking, what does zero waste mean? Right. So I guess uh, if, if, if you can take those old plastic bags to, you know, a store that can recycle them, then they're not going in your landfill trash. Right. So, right. so yeah. What's, what, yeah. What does what does zero waste mean? Sure. I, it's a big term that's come uh, up in the public consciousness. I think in the past five years, 
And what it really means is how you're going to measure your waste, right? How much are you going to divert from the landfill that is a recoverable resource? It could be compost. It could be recycling material. So here in the city of Austin, our goal is, I think, by the year 2040 to have what we call a 90% diversion rate. What that means is out of all the materials you use in your daily life, 90% of that should be diverted from going to the landfill, whether it's recycling, composting, reusing, or even source reduction is a big one, right? Instead right. of actually creating the trash in the first place, make sure you don't. So we, we use all sorts of metrics, especially with our commercial clients. We actually weigh what comes in. Each truck has a scale on it. So we can weigh in and help each place, each commercial client and schools especially know where can we pinpoint? Where is your waste coming from? Are you actually putting stuff in the right place? But sometimes it turns out they, they don't know when they're putting things in the wrong place. Um, one of our big success stories, which they've done a lot of work, I'm not going to say we did it for them, was University of Texas Athletics, the Longhorns. We worked with them last year on their home games. We were the first year working with them on their zero waste initiative. So I think in the beginning of the year on game one, we were about like a 53% diversion rate. We worked with the school. We worked with all the volunteers, big volunteers there, all the students working. We wound up, I think, by the last game, getting a 73% diversion rate, wow. which is amazing for the amount of people that come into that facility. Oh, yeah. It was really great. Uh, you know, you had all the back of the house, the restaurant workers making sure, hey, make sure you put everything in the right place. And then, like I said, that all gets turned into compost. We have what's called the circular economy, right? We're keeping everything super local, right? Hook up. Thank you, my <laughs> And I tell you, I, I, my law degree is from the University of Texas. Although going there for grad school, it's not the same as going for undergrad. But yes, I can, I can, I can hook them too. So. <laughs> you can hang with them. Yeah. <laughs> so that was great. And just, yeah, just keeping everything local. It's great. You know why, you know, uh, one big thing in the papers recently, I guess in the past year or two was about how the recycling industry took a, a nosedive. Yeah. And, you know, a lot of places were sending it to China or Southeast Asia. Uh, fortunately for us, geographically, uh, TDS never sent ours overseas because we have local processors because of where we're located, right? We're kind of in the middle of America. We're central. Places on the coast, it made sense. You have ships coming with cargo. Let's fill them up with recycling and send it back. But it was kind of out of sight, out of mind, right? Oh, we send it over and hopefully they're going to do the right thing. Here, we're domestic. We know we know they have to do the right thing as much as we don't like regulations here in Texas. It's kind, of, kind of important when it comes to industrial toxic waste or making sure things are done the right way. Yeah. You know, our air and water clean, I think, is important across all ideologies, I would hope. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> um, yeah. Economy is important, but we have to make sure the earth is still here for. Yeah. Future. We want to safeguard the future for our kids. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, we've just uh, dealt with the domestic process. Oh, wait a minute. How do I teach? Yeah, another one question. Oh. How do I teach my kids about how to recycle? That's great. I think, Inga, you were right on point before with giving your kids the chore of doing it, right? <laughs> I mean, it's a chore, but also they learn where everything goes, right? Uh, mm -hmm. You know, it's pulling teeth sometimes, depending <laughs> how much your kids want to do it, but make it easy for them, really. Uh, one of the big things I do, and I, a lot of places do it, I'm sure the same recycling folks you have there, you can't put your recyclables in a plastic bag, right? Right. So then you have to think, how am I getting it from my house to the cart, right? So there's different ways you can do it. You can use a reusable bag. I just actually get a paper bag from the grocery store each time. And once that's about three quarters full, so it has the handle on it. And that whole thing can go right in the recycling bin. So give them that job. It gives them autonomy, too. And they feel very proud sometimes. It's one thing we did at schools, too. We would have recycling captains for each classroom, right? Give them a little lanyard. And they're like the boss. They're like making sure. I mean, they get a little out of hand and tell the teachers what to do. But that's good. I want them to tell the adults what to do. Because once they learn, they just want to spread that information out. They feel really important. So giving yeah. the kids the information, the autonomy to do it, it's great. There's also, um, since we're all online now these days, uh, our website again, uh, The Waste Wizard, I don't know if uh, we mentioned that one to you, but no. on that website, um, if you don't have it, it's just, uh, you can just Google TDS Waste Wizard. So on that website, there's actually a recycling video game that kids can kind of click and drag different items and make sure they go in the right bin. So that's another way to reinforce it. And I know the kids love video games. Oh, so. let's see if I can. Oh, I oh. found the game. Ha ha. I okay. to go now. Oh, no, I'm curious. Okay, wait. I'll, let me, I'll put it on a banner real quick. So there's the recycle game. Yep. Yep. So that's, that's one way. Yeah. 
It looks, oh, it looks very 8-bit. Okay, yeah, we're going to play this after. <laughs> My daughter's ready. She's like, let me play the game. <laughs> it's fun. It's fun. It's fun. <laughs> it does, yeah, I mean, that, you know, I think that's a theme through all of the, all of these materials is, um, right, like, you know, like, like going to Gardenville. Here, I'll throw the URL up for that. But like, okay, going to Gardenville and like, you can plan it out with your kids. You'd be like, what do you want to eat? What can we grow? Okay, you want to grow some lettuce? You want to grow some you know, some peas, right? Or like, I mean, it's, well, it's probably too late for tomatoes now, but you know, but right. I mean, you can start planting like a fall garden um, right. in Texas, right? And, um, you know, and then like, I mean, they can get dirty, right? And they can, you know, dig around with stuff. So, um, you know, it's good, it's good fun, right? And then like, like Eco, Eco Academy, like you're talking about how it's a project, right? So they, they've mm -hmm. got the mason jar, they're putting the different materials in, you get to like watch it, it gets gross, right? right? <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know and like, the coloring pages, they're 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 beautiful. It's relaxing. It's something that like all ages can do together. So yeah, and then all this game. I, I'm my daughter's. Yeah, she's gonna as soon as we get off the video, we're gonna, <laughs> we're gonna be playing the game. So it's yeah. educational. Don't tell them. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay. Well, I boy, I I really encourage people like please go to the it, the link is in the description. We've got the the. Um, the post up on the on the blog now, and yeah. it's got links to all these resources, and um, especially the YouTube videos, like the the virtual tours. Um, those are like great things to watch with your kids, so they can, um, you know, see see what's going on behind the scenes, like what happens to the trash and what happens to the compost after it leaves their house. So, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Well, do you have any do you have any kind of like final thoughts about? Um, you know, sort of how like how we can adapt to this. I mean, you're you're a dad too. I mean, you're an expert on sustainability, yeah. but you're also a dad. You know, so yeah. um, you know, just advice for parents as we kind of manage um, having our kids at home and you know try to keep spirits up and keep everyone learning. Sure, sure. I mean, just don't beat your up yeah. yourself up. Hi. <laughs> I think hugs hugs help. <laughs> yes, absolutely. <laughs> having some sort of schedule laid out, I find that yeah. really helps for me. Uh, more my wife helps out do that. She'll schedule out things for the day and just keep me on track with that. But also know that if you don't keep on track with that schedule, hey, it is summer break now, right? So it's okay to just do some other things that are just fun, right? Yeah. But they can be fun and they can be educational at the same time. So just interact with the kids. You know, we're working from home, but take 10 minutes every hour and just say, hey, how are you doing? Just say anything you want to do today and just make something special. Make it, make it a memorable time because you can remember this in 20, 30 years. Remember that time when you stayed home for 18 months? <laughs> <laughs> for us, it's yeah. just making Make it a good memory, right? Okay. We, yeah, we do a lot of cooking. Yeah. Oh, great. Yeah. Fun. That's, that's a good way to connect, too, right? Plant your vegetables <laughs> with them. Because we got to eat. For sure. <laughs> okay. Well, Very thank cool. you so much, Craig. This You're is welcome. a great conversation. I really appreciate you, you coming on. And, and I've learned a lot. And I think our readers have learned a lot, too. And it, we know more about Texas disposal systems than we know how to, you know, stay green while we're at home. Absolutely. Very nice. Keep it going. I love your, your YouTube videos and everything. It's really great to have that resource. So thank you for providing this for everybody. Oh, I really appreciate good. that. Okay. All right. Take care. Thank you. Have a good day.